In this recording, you will learn the secrets of making your spells work 100% of the time, guaranteed. Hello, hello, it's your girl, LearnSpellCasting.com, Bella Isis. Thank you so much for tuning in. In today's lesson, you will learn the secrets of making your spells work 100% of the time, guaranteed. The very first thing you have to realize is that no matter what your spiritual tradition may be, what religion you may be, whether it be a European witchcraft, African, Asian, doesn't matter. Whatever you believe, there are some common tenets, threads, principles among all occult activities. The very first step you must take is deciding what it is you truly want the spell to do. Now that might sound simple. For example, if you're casting a love spell on a specific person, you want that person to love you, right? Sounds simple. But if you examine that desire, why is it that you are specifically desiring that person? There's billions of people on earth. Why that person? And if you take it further one step and you think to yourself, okay, so I get that person. What's in it for me? What pleasure do I obtain from having this person love me? you might discover that it's more complicated than just having that person return affections that you have for them. You may desire, for instance, some social status. I think the kids are calling it clout chasing nowadays, where, for example, let's say you want to date someone famous and you cast a spell for that person to notice you, to like you, to love you. But what is it about that person that's so special? You might not even know them that well. You might not know them at all. You might have just seen them on television, on YouTube, etc. Why are you picking that specific person? If you follow this train of thought, you might discover that what you really want is validation especially if it's coming from someone of a higher social status. So if you want to date someone in the music industry that's famous or a celebrity of any kind, you may be really wanting to reach some sort of level of recognition for yourself. You see what I'm getting at? So let's take an ordinary person, someone that's not a famous, someone that is not a celebrity, and you desire to cast this love spell on them. You want that person to be attracted to you uh, on a romantic level, on a sexual level. You desire that person to desire you in the same way. Why are you specifically seeking that individual? Now remember, they're not celebrities. They're ordinary people. What is it about this person that's making you want to take extra steps, even casting spells, to have them desire you back? Now you might say, well, I'm, I'm attracted to them. I like them. Or it may be that you were already involved with this person and you miss them and you want them back. Now remember, I am not judging you. I'm not asking you to be all judgmental on yourself. I just want you to zero in why, or more specifically, what will you gain if that person responds to you the way you want them to? Are you gonna get a higher social status? Are you gonna get money? Are you going to have access to places, people, and things that you may not on your own be able to obtain? I'm going to give you an example. 
Um, several years ago, I had this young man, handsome, very handsome young man, uh, contact me when I had my occult store. And this man had asked me, this young man had asked for me to cast a spell on this popular gal in college. He's a college guy. And I said, well, why don't you just go up to her and ask her out? I mean, he's handsome. There's absolutely nothing wrong with him. You know, I said, is there, is she dating someone? He said, no, 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 she's not dating anyone. She's very popular. Everybody is after her. And I want to have her come to me. And I thought to myself, okay, so let's, let's take this one step further. Let's say that she pursues you, right? This is the client. He's a handsome guy in college, good looking, and he wants the most popular girl to chase him. I said, what do you gain out of that? And he looked at me and laughed. He says, I'm the man. And that really is at the heart of it in his particular case. He wasn't really pursuing the girl so much so. He was clout chasing. He wanted to be the man in college, to have this pretty girl that everybody wants, want him so bad that he, she chased him. So I'm giving you this example to see that sometimes you want somebody especially when you're casting spells on specific individuals, sometimes it's more than just wanting the person. And having that knowledge will not only help your spell work the way you really want it to work, but then you actually learn a little bit of something about yourself. I am of the opinion that whenever we cast a spell, we really are changing ourselves at a quantum level. You're casting spells on somebody else, but it's affecting you. It's affecting the way you see the world, the way you see yourself. So spells are very powerful change agents. And I want you to be able to take advantage of that and use that knowledge in your spell casting and you will get guaranteed results every single time. So let's continue to analyze this. What is the very first secret? The very first secret of making your spells successful is knowing what you really want to happen. You have to be crystal clear. If you are fuzzy, you're going to get fuzzy results. If you are unclear as to the real truth of why you want this change to occur, you might not even recognize the change when it happens. Let me give you another example. Say you are madly in love with someone, but that person doesn't really know you. Again, it could be a celebrity, it could be a neighbor, it could be somebody you work with. You have fixated, you are now obsessed with this individual. Step back before you cast a love spell on them and figure out what is it about this individual that makes you so attracted to them. Or, to put it a different way, what do you gain by relating to this person. You might just be lonely and this individual may have just smiled at you once and that made your imagination go into a whirlwind spin and create a relationship where there really isn't one. They were just being polite, they were just being pleasant. They may have looked your way and smiled and not really even looked at you. Hey, it's happened. But you have now created a fantasy where this individual is the most perfect person on earth, which of course doesn't exist. So why I'm asking you in this case to examine yourself and your true reasons for desiring that person, if indeed you are lonely, 
then sure, cast a spell. But cast a spell to meet the most compatible person for you. You no longer have to fixate on that one individual and then say, ah, this spell didn't work when that individual didn't fulfill the need that you truly are seeking, which is companionship. You get what I'm saying with this? So that's the first step. The first step is to consider what do you gain by having or getting the results of the spell before you cast the spell so that you can understand your true motives behind casting the spell. Now let's say that you are certain of the motives. You dated somebody, they hurt you, they broke up with you, you think you missed them, but you figured out, I'm actually really angry at this person and I want a second chance and I want to prove myself to them. Okay, so you want this person because you want them, because you desire them, because you want to have a second chance with them, right? In the case of casting a spell to reconcile with a lover. Okay, so the second step or secret is to be clear how you will recognize the spell is working. This is really amazing to me. I have read hundreds or now close to a thousand comments since November of 2017 on videos that I've posted on casting spells on YouTube. And the comments are interesting because some people are asking me, once I cast the spell, how do I know it's working? Well, before you cast the spell, figure that out. I'm going to give you an example. Say you cast a spell, and I'm referring to love spells in this example. It could, it could be applicable to anything else, okay? All of these tips, all of these secrets are applicable to any type of spell you cast. So the first step is being clear what is the motive so that when you cast the spell, you cast it with that motive in mind. You don't just want Johnny and Mary to break up. You want Johnny and Mary to break up because the real goal of the spell is for you to get together with Johnny or Mary. See what I'm saying? Okay. Second step is how do I recognize the spell is working? Unlike movies and TV shows, there isn't 30 minutes to an hour's time to wrap up the storyline. This is real life. And people are complex. One minute you are easily influenced, another minute you may resist the influence. And spells are influential. It's not like a hammer to a head. It's, it's really like advertising. It's, it's subtle. It, it keeps building up and building up and building up until it makes you, much like advertising, go to the store and buy the specific brand that you saw in the advertisement. Okay? That's generally how spells work. Spells do not turn people into zombies that do and obey your every command. That kind of spell exists, but that is an advanced spell that is usually an ongoing spell. It's not a one time I lit a candle and now you are going to love me for the rest of your life. That's not how it works. So what is the key here? The second key to getting your spell to work is this. When casting spells, you need to clarify in your mind how you will know, a sign that you will know that the spell is working to keep you going. Many signs exist. I'm going to give you one example. If you are lighting candles on a specific person or goal, and that candle for no reason at all. It doesn't have any oils on it or anything that may interfere 
in the candle wick itself, there is no draft, for example, coming into the room that is affecting the flame. And that candle begins to crackle makes a popping, crackling sound. It is believed within the occult community that the spirits, that gods, that the deities, that the person, that the spell that you are working on is literally working. It's starting to work. That's a simple sign that you can get immediately. That's one sign. If your candle is calm and unaffected doesn't mean it isn't working. I'm just speaking about signs, how to know that the spell is working. So that's, for example, candle. Now, if, for example, um, if it's a candle inside of a glass container and it's making like this black sooty smoke, that might be an indicator that there's some resistance somewhere. That even though the spell is trying to work, something is kind of interfering, okay? So you, in this particular instance, you can use some divination. You can use a pendulum. You can use tarot cards. You can use I Ching. Whatever method of divination you prefer to use, you can use to determine what is going on with the spell, okay? So again, the second secret to making your spells work is to determine how, what sign you're going to get before you see the fulfillment of your spell to let you know if the spell is working. All right. So determine that. For example, you might say during the spell, I want this or the other sign. I want the person to contact me, okay? If it's a contact spell, I want them to somehow get word to me that they're trying to find me, that they're trying to contact me. I want them to like a photo in my Instagram. Whatever it is, try to figure out a simple, don't make it too complicated, method to give you a hint. Another thing that we occultists do is we pay attention for natural signs like crows or birds singing or if you turn on the radio or the TV set or YouTube and let's say you're casting a spell on somebody called Laura and all of a sudden that name out of the blue pops up. These are signs, okay? The universe is sending you signs. Other people believe in numbers. If all of a sudden you look at your clock and you see the number 444, you know, repetitive numbers. These are signs the universe is sending you that the work you are doing is progressing. Okay? So that's secret number two. Determine a sign and pay attention to signs that the spell you're going to cast or you already cast is working. The third and most important one is to have an open mind. Now, you can be a beginning witch. This can be your very first spell. You're not even a witch. You're just trying something out. And if you can just keep an open mind, if you can just detach yourself and don't, you know, a lot of people are blamers. They like to blame either the spell itself. Let me give you a bonus tip. You are the spell. You're the greatest magician of all. You are the greatest influencer of all. It's your mind. It's your willpower. So when you cast a spell, the third secret to making that spell work is to keeping an open mind and allowing it to work. Don't go in it thinking, oh, it's not going to work then don't cast the spell. If you don't believe it's not going to work, don't waste your time. Do something else. I'm very serious. Whether it's my own spell, your own spell, one you, you found online, don't waste time casting a spell if you do not 
believe it's going to work because you are the greatest force in the spell. It's not the candle. It's not the oils. It's not the honey or the salt or whatever you are using. The principal component, the thing that gets the ball rolling is you, the spellcaster. That's why I always encourage, if you don't feel that you can do this, look for someone that can. Detach yourself from it. Because if you're adding negative energy, then that's exactly what you're going to get. A lot of people may liken this to the secret and the power of the subconscious mind. Whatever you think of it, I am giving you the quantum physics of spellcasting. If you go into it, observing it, and thinking that it's not going to work, I guarantee you it isn't going to work. So what do you do instead? If you're unsure, give it a chance. That's all I ask. Give it a chance. And I promise you that whatever you believe, <laughs> this is a key, whatever you believe will happen, will happen for you. I hope these secrets are the catalyst that will help you achieve your wildest dreams. I hope you obtain the things that will make you happy, that will spiritually help you grow and continue in a journey of prosperity, of peace, and of joy. Be blessed. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe and share it. Converse with others. Comment below. Hey, I'm here for you. I wish you the best. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.